Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Coming up this week, we've got a gold bike, gold wheels, a limited edition Canyon Air Road, and some retro glasses making a comeback. Plus, we're discussing why pro racing has got so much faster. There were definitely some tech trends that we observed while we were on the ground at the Giro. Oh, nice. Let's get to it, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. First things first this week, we actually have a poll to discuss because last week, Manon and I asked if everyone thought artificial intelligence has a place in cycling. Mm. Off the cuff, what's your thought, yes or no? Uh, whether we like it or not, it has a place. It's going to have a place in everything. Okay. Um, 63% of people said no, it doesn't have a place in cycling. I voted yes with the other 37% of people. Oh, mm. there you go. Okay, um, we should probably... Move on to this week's main talking point. But before we do, I'm slightly disappointed you haven't asked me about my big Italian bike ride themed jumper. I'm wearing a hoodie. Well, I mean, firstly, I'm impressed that you're wearing a hoodie. Oh, don't worry, I'm going to take as it as off the world's in a minute. like hottest man who just sits there sweating in a t shirt. When it's I've like... actually put the aircon to minus 10 this morning. Oh, Jesus. Um, and I'm going to take this off in a minute. Don't um, worry. I'm also disappointed that we're not matchy matchy and I'm wearing mine too, but mine's in the wash because I, I wore it when I was out in Italy. That's not got absolutely nothing to do with Italy, you one. I know. It's an Alpdorez one. You just hang your head in shame. You've got your Italian um, yeah. cap on, though. Well, if you want to get some big Italian bike ride merch, it's available in Global Cycling Network. Incredible. Um, yeah, now... Uh, I've got a question I'll post yeah, you first. So we want to talk about is pro racing getting faster than ever before. But before we do that... Um, you did a time trial at the weekend. I did. How was it? Please tell everybody. Right, so for those of you who aren't aware, I I've set myself a goal. I'm trying to ride a 10-mile time trial in 18 minutes something. Um, Which is absolutely rapid if you don't understand time trial times. Yeah, it's not easy. But yeah. no goal worth achieving is. <laughs> so that's why I've set myself quite a hard goal. Anyway, this weekend did one. I got a PB, and I was like agonisingly close. So I did 19.02. <laughs> that is actually bloody close. Three seconds off. It's like, oh. but like to be fair, I was I'd just come back from Italy the night before it really late. So is this a confirm? Is this the start of your excuse? Yeah, I had a okay. real crap like whoop recovery score as proof. Right? Okay, yeah, my power was down because okay. I was knackered from Italy. Yeah, and so I'm actually that's quite a good thing because I, if I do the power that I know I can do, it now suggests that I'm aero enough to do it. Speedy boy. Yeah. So what power did you do? Oh, I was like. 314 average. That's actually pretty good, even if you say it was down slightly. Yeah. Um, I'm in quite good shape for me. Yeah, but you have, in fairness, right, you have got all of the gear, all the equipment, all the setup, mm. which kind of leads into what we're discussing today. Isn't well, it? one thing we should mention before we go on to that mm. is that at the same race, I got beaten by a chap called George Fox. Oh, God, I forgot this. He did, he, he rode 10 miles in 18 minutes, 41 seconds. Tell everyone what bike he was using. On a road bike. A road which bike. made everyone else look absolutely rubbish. Everyone else is just like, oh, well, I'm pants. Um, well, if you want to go on to technicalities, technically it was riding a time trial by drop bars. But anyway, we'll brush over that <laughs> aspect. Um, but in terms yeah. of pro cycling, why do we think... Pro cycling is getting faster than it's ever been before. Well, that's the thing. So the, the fact that I can go, you know, oh, so fast off what is relatively like kind of, well, very like average, well-trained amateur, but yeah. all the same, nowhere near pro level watts. Okay. And George as well, going that quick on a road bike, drop bars, is is indicative of, of how far tech has come. Yeah. Because if I did that kind of time in, you know, 30 years ago, I would have like had national competition record. I would well, have... Actually, what year? What year's record were you sort of close to then? Well, I'm knocking on the door of, I think, <clears throat> 1987's record of Colin Sturgis. <clears throat> yeah? It was like 1848. So I, I'm like knocking on the door of that. Technology has improved that much. I'm quicker than Sean Yates. That's how much technology has improved, that you could be quicker than I'm like, some of the world's best from... 1980s. I'm like uh, over a minute quicker than Sean Yates. Wow. And Sean Yates is a, is a mu was a much better bike rider than I am. Significantly. Or could ever be. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, what but, about um, pro racing though? Let's get this on track. Yeah. So, right. Like we obviously saw a lot of stuff um, at, at the Giro and people are saying, oh, pro racing is faster now. Mm. And there's, there's people who go, oh, well, that's because they must all be on drugs. <laughs> do they and, say it just like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there are cynics out there. Yeah. Right? People do say that. Now, we don't know. 
We definitely don't. We don't know if that's the case. I'd like to think not. But what we can do is add up the technical differences that you get now from the, the, the equipment that is being used now yeah. versus what was used, say, 10 years ago. So if we do 2023 versus uh, 2013, right? Yeah. And we can work this out and, and run some numbers on some things that we know. So I've done this. So if we focus on road bike tech and, and model it in, in my windsock, yeah. um, I've selected a 10-mile time trial course that I'm going to ride this weekend in the Lake District. Um, I was and, is it hilly? Uh, oh. It's got a nice downhill bit. All right. Um, so if we, if we model a typical road bike drag coefficient, which is a CDA of around 0.24, if you're in, in the drops and riding aero, yeah. right? Um, and we put in 400 watts, which is a typical pro power output, yeah. then using equipment from, from 10 years ago, uh, we get a time of around 20 minutes, 30 seconds. Okay. Okay. Now, if we make some changes, so if we decrease the drivetrain efficiency by half a percent because they're using better lubricants, they're using wax, whereas we'll assume they're using a drip-on lube, yeah. right? That's half a percent of, of drivetrain efficiency. Then if we reduce the rolling resistance yeah. uh, coefficient because they were using tubular tyres back then, and now we reduce them to some fast tubeless tyres. Tubeless tyres. Significant I mean, saving there. They're like the, garlic bread. They're the future. They are. The tyre tech has improved a lot. Um, then if we um, put narrow bars, we've measured that saving, so we can we know roughly what that reduction is. Mm -hmm. um, and then we put in a slight reduction of drag coefficient for a slightly faster bike frame. They're more integrated now. The cables are hidden. Yeah. Bike frames have got a bit faster. Um, and clothing improvements. There big, have been big, big clo there. clothing improvements too. We've and that's probably one of videos. the biggest ones. Yeah. Now, and aero socks as well. Big one. They weren't being worn 10 years ago. Maybe no. by like a couple of weirdos. You got laughed out of the peloton. Yeah. <laughs> we can bring that road bike CDA down to around 0.21. Mm -hmm. you, you, uh, George Fox's CDA is going to be way lower than that. But for a, a, a you know, Taco van der Horn type rider. Like an optimised modern road rider. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, 0.21. With that, you then go on the same 10 mile time trial course for the same power. One minute, 18 seconds faster if we model it here. So that's an average speed of 50.2 kilometers per hour versus 47 kilometers per hour for the 10 years ago setup. That's outrageous. It's huge. And in terms of watts, that's, you're looking in the region of like 60 to 70 watts. So... 60 to 70 watts. That's a lot. It's massive. And it's this is not like, this is the thing. There's always cynics who go like, oh, marketing, marketing, marketing. It's like... It's yeah. it's just science. Like, yeah. go try it. Like, I think mean, the the big takeaway is like getting the like principles right of this stuff. The difference between all of the certain different types of products, they're obviously a bit more marginal. But get the principle and the core design and type of product right. That's where you're seeing your big gain come from. Yeah, I yeah. mean, well, if like in the time trial race I did at the weekend, yeah, the entire like top ten had done nineteen like nineteen minutes. Or below. That's not. So, like, you, you, you know, you were like yeah. that. That if you take that, if you look at time trials from ten years ago, the winning time would have been a nineteen. You know, whereas now you're not yeah. even getting into the top ten with a nineteen. You know, the, the, like all this stuff works. So our technology has moved on a lot, yeah. which is kind. Of, I, let hear me out, right? My sort of thinking on this subject is because of all the stuff that we've just gone through. There's a small part of me that feels like cycling technology may have peaked ever so slightly. In the current state of the rules, what the technology that's available, the materials, the science, the research, yeah. I feel like from now onwards, unless there's a big shake-up of all the rules or some groundbreaking new technology or research, we're only ever like scraping away at the last little percent here and there. I see what you mean. Yeah. It feels like most of the low-hanging fruit with yeah. regards to you know, gains to make bikes faster, sort of they've they've been they've been done. They've been and gone almost. Yeah. Like it, it feels like there would have to be a big paradigm shift in Ooh, bike tech I like that word. for there to be a, another big leap. Yeah. And it's not certain what that is at the moment. No. Although I I do feel in my experience of working with like clothing brands and, and doing things and chatting to people like the guys at No Pins and yeah. stuff. Um, and also Castelli, it feels that there is still a lot of room for improvement on the clothing side. Yeah, 
But because... again, I think that's within the scope of the rules because now look at look at the aero bra. Yeah. I mean, people are having to do that to yeah. reach around to the rules, as we've mentioned many times before. You see, I reach. Yeah. Rules. Yeah. But but even well even so no I think there there is a lot of uh, scope to be made on clothes um, yeah. making things system to, you know um, m- making things very specific for riders individually. Well, um, I'd like to see more development of this stuff, but I think mm-hmm. if you change the rules, you're going to see crazy development again, which is really cool for the top of the sport. But as a drawback and maybe negative side mm-hmm. to that, it, there's potentially mm-hmm. going to see more costs going into products, and that's what I don't really want to see unless. Is only really the real top top end of the sport. Yeah. Then, I, I'm all for innovation. I think I'd love to see crazy innovation at the top of the sport. Maybe even get rid of the rule that you have to have like everything commercially available. Yeah. Allow the crazy stuff at the top. Keep everything a bit more moderate and sensible for everyone yeah. else. I th- it's yeah. It's um. It's crazy, but the general trend that we said at the Giro as well is that yeah things have got faster. Yeah. So. Um, the average bar width has dr- decreased dramatically from like sort of being 44, 42, 10 mm. years ago, now down to like 38. Everyone's on narrow boys now. Yeah, 40s, yeah. 38s and 36s are what most people are sort of using. And then, you know, on top of that, you've got um, the tyres have got, have got a lot faster. Mm. The tyres is a big one. The bike's a little bit more aero. But then what we're seeing is bigger chain rings being used. It's because everyone's going so fast. They've well, got to use bigger it. gears. That's it. Yeah. Like, you know, 54s and 55s is now the new standard on, yeah. on on road stages. And then sprinters now using 58s on flat stages. That's mind-blowing, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I guess what, what we kind of summed up is, it's not just down to drugs. Technology has made people faster. <laughs> is that yeah. the takeaway from this? That's the big takeaway. All right. Time now for hot tech, and we're going to begin with some retro Oakleys. Yeah, so these are the racing jacket, they're called. So there was, so I'm a bit confused by this, because there was a racing jacket. Correct. And then there was the jawbone, which is the one that Garen Thomas is famed for wearing. Yeah, these predate that, I think. Yeah, and then they changed the name, I think, of the jawbone to the racing jacket. Is that right? I think we've basically proved that our knowledge of the history of glasses is not quite perfect. Okay. But take a look at these glasses because they're kind of cool. Anyway, so these are a red tiger design, Oakley are calling it. They're $261. There's only 375 pairs of them available. And they are part of the Oakley Museum collection, which I think is... Which I think is museum, museum, but it's M U Z M, which is kind of cool. I think when brands are like, "Oh, let's just use a few different letters," uh, but if you're American, it kind of makes sense because you'd say Z rather than Z. Yeah, museum. Yeah, they do, they do do that. Don't they? Um, irrespective of the glasses, mm. have you seen some of the images which have been used on Oakley's Instagram page to promote the glasses? Yes. Why on earth is there a naked man there? Which look, is actually a pro mountain bike. It looks like AI generated images, <laughs> doesn't it? It looks like it's, it's like one of those, some of those weird like AI generated images. I mean, look, like look at that. Is that doing it for you? It's not doing it for me, but yeah, it's doing okay. it for someone out there. Oh. Um, anyway, mm. let us know in the comments section what you think of those. There's also a new bike from Canyon. Oh, I've seen this. This is this is very nice. Yeah. What are your thoughts on it? Like the like the design. Yeah, really cool. Okay. Um, so this is the Canyon CFR Air Road Tokyo Edition. It's going to be available to order, I think, for the 25th of May. You can order that online, obviously. It's a Canyon. Priced at just under €9,000. We've seen Canyon use this kind of theme in the paint before, which I think is cool. I like the look of it. Yes. But um, nice. out there. Yeah. Um, and, well, being the Giro at the moment, yes. Colnago, oh. Italian bike brand, have done like a, 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 a Giro special bike the big italian bike ride for the big italian bike ride which is gold um gold everything yeah i'm gonna throw out there now at least over a year ago i tried doing a gold leaf bike it didn't work anything like well i actually heard that in order to do this bike um that ernesto watched your video (laughs) to learn how to do it and then and then set about doing it yeah if that's true that's how he found out how to do it if that's true i'm incredible it's not true i made it up oh (laughs) Thoughts, <laughs> yeah. um, on a more serious note, Definitely this bike, not true. <laughs> so, yeah, 
I'm more serious. Though. It's using proper real gold leaf rather than the imitation stuff I use. Mm. Loads of gold details throughout the bottle. We've got gold spokes, gold um, a pulley wheel, gold bottle cage. Which actually like so the bottle cage is 3D printed, I think, in titanium, then gold leafed, and it's made in a spiral design which mimics that of the Giro Trophy. Uh, that bottle cage is really cool the way they've done that. That is incredible. Mm. Loads of little gold details all the way throughout the bike. Got them on the saddle, got them on the tyres, all the way throughout. Anyway, mm. one of the prize of this gold encrusted bike? Yeah. Um, just short of £20,000. So like what, like €20,000, €20,000? Precisely, €22,000. Yeah. Um, um, so, good. I, do you know what? For all that gold, I actually thought it would be more than that. Um... However, I'd never want to ride it anywhere, apart no. from maybe in, like, Abu Dhabi. It would fit, fit in. in there. It would fit in there. Um, what else have we got? Gold wheels. If a gold bike is your thing, what about gold wheels? Take a look at these. They are from... Um, parkour. 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 I, I saw these as well. Yeah? They've used some, like, gold, like, nano paint. Well, it, yeah, so it's a nano paint pigment, which is... Um, somehow in with the carbon fibres rather than in with the resin, which means you've got like sort of clear sort of resin over the top. It means the colour is almost like deep into the carbon resin. It's cool because it does create that interesting effect where you can see the strands of carbon yeah. fibre, but they're like gold in, in like the striations and stuff. You can sort of see it. It's, it's nice, but it's, um, yeah, it's not for me. I what I did, <laughs> what I did find interesting is when you look on their website, it says limited edition, only 10 sets, but then it says they're made to order. But if they are made to order, you could just make more if you really wanted to. Anyway, just over £2,000 for these bad boys. Quite a few different options there. Yeah. If um, funky looking wheels are your kind of thing, but maybe your budget can't stretch that far, cheaper wheels from um, Windspace. You know the brand? They yeah. do their wheel brand, which is Lun. Can we just show the quick clip of Alex going down the staircase of doom on the Windspace wheels? Alex versus the staircase of death. Down, it's down, it's down. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Stick. <laughs> oh, oh that was flashbacks legendary. from that. Yeah. Um, anyway, so they've got a color, um, a colored wheel. This one is just painted onto the rim, like that chameleon kind of color flip effect. Yeah. And they also have a Uber Bling set of wheels that they've just released called the Mega, which have got carbon fiber rim, carbon fiber spokes, carbon fiber hub. It's all bonded together. Um, and what's the weight? I don't have the weight to hand. There's actually not many details on this wheel set online. No. So, um, yeah, it's worth keeping your eyes peeled about that because that's quite an interesting development from that brand. Cool. Yeah. That's Hot Tech wrapped up for this week. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll go, before we get on to comments of the week, hang on. Hang You're on. right over there, mate? Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> What's up? Oh, I'm stiff from the gym. <laughs> Pretend that you go to the gym. Do you go to the gym? I've just not been going to the gym much recently, and that's why having gone to the gym once, it's killed me. Oh, so. <laughs> if you're dragging this out, <laughs> come on. <laughs> right, before we get onto comments of the week. Yeah. It's your birthday, isn't it? It is my birthday. What are you, 25? 25 again. Got you a present. It's an adult LG. Yeah. That's me. And large adults. Yeah. What is this? Can I, can I open it now? Of course you can. It's like a bit of budget wrapping, isn't it? Just in the... No. Ah, thanks. <laughs> I can just try to guess what it says. It's a, it's a more, more, more power, baby! <laughs> <laughs> I literally love this T-shirt. I've wanted yeah. one for ages. There you go. Thanks very much. There you go. Um, Donut Media. Mm. If you're a uh, yeah, fellow YouTube channel. It's good on them. Love it. Thanks very much, mate. That, no worries. Can we fist bump that? Yeah, you go. Oh, thanks. That right. means a lot. Comments of the week. Um, oh, I love that T-shirt. <laughs> Chloe's going to love it even more. More power, <laughs> baby. There you go. Right. So. Um, from underneath last week's show. First right. comment is from Loch Ness. They say, Manon's captivated look when listening to Bob reading out about AI effects in cycling was gold. Yeah, basically. Manon not interested in AI. nodded off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just like zoned out a bit. Oh. Well, Sean Hannah, 9428, says, something cleverer than Manon or Abe? <laughs> that's Ollie, isn't it? It that's is. O-I. Yeah, Ollie intelligence. Mm. I think that's what it means. Well, to be fair, you are cleverer than me. I don't know. I, I don't judge 
I don't judge stuff just on exams. I'm not a doctor. Yeah, but they give them out to anybody these days. Um, random um, off-the-cuff question. What yeah. did you get for GCSE Geography? A star. Oh, I got a B. Okay, never mind. Okay. Um, underneath the tech clinic from last week, someone called The Crowded Planet says, new drinking game, take a shot every time Ollie mentions wax chains, you'll be hammered in no time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. There you go. Um, and Zero hot tech video. Yeah. Ollie's the, well, this is uh, from Andrew W. Hayes, 1339, who says, Ollie is cycling's equivalent of a Star Wars nerd. His excitement for lum simple gains is lovable. Yeah. Someone else Thumbs was up saying. emoji. <laughs> Someone else was said. And this is Jace, Jace Collins Cork says, cracking tour tech. Just need a bus tour to tow. Just need a bus tour, really, or are those days gone? Well, no. Yeah. Because while I was out there, I managed to sneak onto the UAE team bus. Yeah. And I went for a good rummage through all of the cupboards. <laughs> like, sounds really sinister. all of them. That sounds so sinister. Yeah. Sat on the toilet, went in the shower. <laughs> Is everything. that in the video? Yeah. You sit on the toilet? Yeah. All right, fantastic. Right. It's now time for the Bike Vault, which is my favourite part of the show. If you're not familiar with how this works, you upload pictures of your bike onto the GCN app. Everyone at home can vote it either nice or super nice. And, um, well, we play along as well, don't we? Yeah, mm. right. So, um, most super nice bike last week in the app? No. No. Absolutely not. Where's the rest of it? I don't know where the rest of where's it is. Where's the rest of it? Uh, it's in little chain ring. Yeah. It's a jaunty angle. Okay. It's like, no. This is from Adridge85. Absolutely not. Next. Yeah. Right. It's just a nice from us. K, K Nut. Or maybe it's KP Nut. I think that might be it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I prefer K P Nut. <laughs> maybe so that's right. Back to Ostro Vam. Um, in a custom metallic blue which is really nice. I like this. That's very blee, isn't it? That is. I big. think we can go super nice on that one. Yeah. I like the industrial container backdrop thing going on as well. No pedals though, but no one. Um, Next one we have Mir Miriandas75. Andreas. Yeah, that yeah. as well. With a BHG8. Why is it the wrong way around? Why would you do that to us? Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it is a nice. Funky valve caps. So. Oh no, those those are the um, they're the on the top end DT Swiss wheels. They come with those. They're like aero valve cap things. Kind of cool. Wow, for the tubeless valves. Didn't know I hadn't seen that. Non drive side. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's a shame. John Mayer, nineteen sixty one. Not the John Mayer. I don't know who that person is, but yeah, he's got Jennifer Aniston. He's like a guitar player. Oh yeah, I know him well. <laughs> um, Conarco Ace from twenty fourteen. Yeah, that is John Mayer's bike. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know whether you're joking or not. Uh, yeah, no, I've seen him riding around that in Hollywood all oh, the time. Oh, yeah. yeah, up around the streets of LA. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a well, bit I'd dirty, like, isn't it? It does need a little bit of a clean, but let's be let's be fair. Valves are aligned. It's in the correct gear. Cranks are aligned. There's no unnecessary gubbins on it. It's in frame. It's not quite at a jaunty angle. Um, I'm going to throw it out there. I'm going to go super nice. I'm going to be kind. All oh, right. Yeah. That's, that is scraping in. Yeah. That's that right. one. Um, Nikor 18 next with a Brooklyn in 2023. What is this? Wowzers. <laughs> that is That is something else. <laughs> that is something else. That's like, so, yeah, crazy single speed going on. Yeah. With a rear brake fitted. Um, I think that's kind of cool, you know. Yeah. It's like a functional, cool, get around, single speed. Yeah, why not? I wasn't Can't expecting that from you. Hey. You want to super nice that, do you? I'll go with that. I'll roll with that if you want. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with that. That's nice high nice spoke count wheels as well. Good nice for strength. And, yeah. um, Ron Orr next with a Allied Alpha Disc 2019 taken in... Um, I was going to say a velodrome, an outdoor velodrome, but it's more of a racetrack. Yeah. Yeah. I Nashville. Think, I think that is grounds. a... Well, it says All-American 400, so maybe it is a 400-metre velodrome. 
I don't know. How do we know? Let us know in the comments section down yeah. below. Um, I like the look of it. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go super nice on this one. I yeah, think. I'm digging it. 140 rotor on the front. The new they're the new Dura Ace ones. Yeah, it's mm, like um, yeah, that's cool. It's neat. It's got a shadow stand. Hell yeah! That was our last bike vault. That super was it. nice. Wow, I enjoyed that. Uh, do you know what else? Yeah. So, I filmed a video of Primoz Roglic's TT bike, Olympic champion Primoz Roglic TT bike. Mm. Anyway. Guess who had shadow stands? Yumbo Visma. Yumbo Visma had shadow stands. Yumbo Visma had, like, the team have shadow stands to put the bikes on to take photos of them. How cool is that? That is cool. Did you super nice all of them? No. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. If so, man. if you, um, well, if you want a shadow stand, well, we have those in the shop as well. Mm. You can get them from. Right, we've rambled on for long enough. I am going to go model my new T-shirt. I'm going to put a picture of it over on the GCN app. You can give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, do all that jazz. We'll see you next week. Love you, bye. Bye.